attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Bernina Embroidery Software 8, Back to Basics and Beyond with Lettering. You can submit questions by typing them into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send your questions at any time during the presentation. Our presenter is Debbie Lashbrook. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you, Julie, and welcome, everyone. Lettering is a great reason to own software, and this webinar is going to be about all different things that you can do with lettering. Not every single thing, but a lot of different things. I first of all want to thank those who sent emails prior to the webinar about your lettering questions that helped me prepare the webinar and i've tried to incorporate your questions into the exercises but you will have time to submit questions as well as julie mentioned now over on the right hand side of the screen i have what I am viewing on my screen. And this is where you will find the handouts listed. If you're not seeing this, if you go to view and make sure that, and the view is up here at the top, if you go to view and make sure that there is a check mark by handouts, you should be able to download these handouts. There are three different handouts, one for each of the topics we'll be covering. Now, some of you perhaps don't have software yet, and some of you may have just purchased the software. So this first section on lettering basics is designed for you. It will cover the basics of what you can do with lettering. And this handout is directly from the mastery um, for the software. Then next we'll cover designing with lettering. And this is going to include some creative ways that you can use lettering. And then the third handout is on creative lettering. So how you can create your own lettering style. Now, just as a precaution, I don't always follow the handouts step by step. So if you have printed out the handouts and are trying to follow them, basically it's better to watch the presentation and then go back later and go through the handouts. I think you'll get more from the presentation that way. One of the things we're going to look at will be object properties, and that's how we're going to make changes to our lettering. So in the object properties dialog box, you can select either embroidery or true type category. Now embroidery fonts are digitized specifically for embroidery and take into account the push pull that happens when you stitch on a fabric. True type fonts are more like auto digitized lettering and sometimes they are successful and sometimes not quite so successful. There are all sorts of fun true type fonts that you can use. As far as group, when I have all selected, I'm going to see both the embroidery and all the true type fonts. But if I tick on block, serif, script or decorative, I will only be seeing those particular type of true type fonts. So the group corresponds to true type fonts and not embroidery fonts. I can click on the drop down arrow and choose the font that I want to use. London happens to be the default font. I can change the height of the lettering. I can change the width as a percent of the height. I can add italics, I can change the letter spacing, I've got all sorts of justifications, and then I have baselines as well. Now there is a preview of the different style of font in uh, just above the word baseline. We'll be doing a baseline exercise and baseline will show you how the font is oriented in the software. With designing with lettering, we're going to do several different exercises, and these are some of the examples of the exercise. 
And then we'll be doing a design with creative lettering where we're going to apply different types of fills to the lettering. Just a few reminders before we get started. There are lettering YouTube videos. And if you just go to youtube.com and type in software eight videos on lettering, you can review those lettering videos that cover the basics of what you can do in the software. I also want to let you know that an update to the software is coming this fall. It is a free update and it will be automatic and it will bring you to software 8.2. So it will be coming in the fall. So let's go ahead and open the software. And we'll, we'll start out with lettering basics. There are three basic ways we can add lettering to the software screen. And one is by clicking on the lettering icon, then clicking on the screen and just typing in the word that we want and then pressing enter. We can also right click on the lettering icon and this opens up object properties. We can type in the word that we want and when we open, um, when we add lettering in this way, we can actually choose our font, we can change the height, we can do all those changes prior to activating the letter. So I can go OK and then I click on the screen to add that word. I can also press the A on the keyboard and that also opens up object properties. And again, I can type in the word that I want and make all the changes that I want. Click OK and click on screen. Now I can also make a quick clone of any word by right clicking and dragging. And I have my four words on screen now. If I want to align this lettering, I can drag a bounding box around all the words and I can go to the arrange toolbox and align centers vertically. I can also scroll down a bit and space them evenly down. So if you're working with imported fonts, say a, a font program uh, where you add one letter at a time, you can use this same process to align the letters. And notice that there are all different ways to align designs as well as lettering. Now let's talk about what we can do with some of these letters once they're on screen. One of the things I could do is change the colors of the individual letters. So I'm going to select this and notice that the whole word is selected. The black boxes are around that entire word. If I want to change the colors to individual colors, I will need to go to the edit toolbox and break that word apart. Then I can select each letter individually and by clicking on one of the colors in the color palette, I can change each color to an individual color. Now, one of the things, one of the reasons we might want to do this is so that the machine will tie off, cut, and then go to the next letter. So in this way, we might want to embroider the word all the same colors, but we want to activate tie offs. And this is a quick and easy way to do that. Now, let's say I wanted to edit this word. I can double click and I can change it to a different font. And I'll just go ahead and select one of the fonts and apply that. And you can see that it updates. I can also change the height by going into object properties. I can change the width, say, to 110% and make the words uh, a little bit wider than it is long. I can also make changes to a word by using the control handles around the selected word. If I want to enlarge lettering, I can hold down the shift key and I will enlarge from center out. If I click on that lettering again, the black control handles turn into outline squares and I can rotate my letters. Above 
the word, you'll see this diamond control point. There's also one below it. And these will lean the letters either to the left or to the right. So I can change my words either through object properties or visually on the screen. Now, another thing I can do is kern letters. And in this case, say that I want to make certain letters closer together than the automatic spacing does. I can select that word and click on reshape. And there are magenta control points in the center of the letters. And if I click and drag, I can move the lettering along the baseline. So I can make certain letters closer together. And even though certain letters may be accurately spaced mathematically, they may look weird in the certain combinations of letters that you have. And in this way, you can kern or move the or change the spacing of the individual letters. Now on to baselines. I'll go to the digitize toolbox and I want to right click on lettering because I want to open up object properties for this. And I'm going to type in embroidery, then press enter to go to the next line, type in the number eight, and then type in software after pressing enter. When you press enter, it moves the, each word into the next line. The first baseline I'm going to show you is called predefined. And I'm going to select that baseline and click OK. And I want to click in the center and then drag to the right. Now, the direction you drag is really important here because it will influence how the letters are oriented toward one another. When I get the circle the size that I want it, I click again and then press Enter. And you can see that my three lines of lettering are arced on the top and bottom row, and the one in the middle is a straight baseline. Now, if I select these individually, I can edit them individually. And say, for example, I wanted this eight to be larger. I can hold down the shift key. Again, that resizes from center out, and I can make that number larger. I'll go back to the lettering dialog box and then type in Bernina. And this time I'm going to use a vertical font and or a vertical baseline. And I want to change the letter spacing. Usually when you use vertical baselines, you will want to increase the spacing. No set amount. You'll just have to kind of experiment with this. And I click on the up arrow to increase the lettering spacing. The reason you do this is because vertical lettering is kind of hard to read. So if you increase the spacing, it's easier to read. I'll click on apply and then click on the screen. And then I can move this lettering closer. I can also enlarge it. I could change this font style, any of those things that I can edit through object properties, I can still do. Another baseline that's fun is called any shape. Now I'll first have to deselect because I don't want to make changes to the word Bernina. So I deselect and now my box is empty and I can type in my next phrase. And I can change the font if I wish. And notice that I get a preview of the different fonts. And I can choose the font that I want to use. And then I'll click on any shape. And, by, and then click on apply. I'll start with a left click and then do right clicks to form the shape of the line. Now, you don't want a lot of variation in this line. You don't want steep curves. You don't want sharp points because the lettering is going to follow the line that you digitized. When I press enter, 
my words are generated on screen. So that's some basics with what you can do with baselines. So let's go ahead and go to the second handout on designing with lettering. And the first thing that I'm going to show you is that you can use lettering to form objects and actually form designs from letters. Again, I will right click on the lettering icon and type in M and X. And for this particular exercise, I'm going to use the bamboo font and I'll increase the size to a one click OK, and then I click on screen to generate the lettering. And I can change the color while they're selected. Now notice that both letters are selected. And when I deselect and come back and select the lettering, they're still selected. So I have to go to the edit toolbox and break these letters apart in order to move them individually. So I'm gonna move one, and I'll click on it again to access the rotate handles and then rotate that M. I'm gonna do the same with the X. I will rotate that. And when I bring these two together, it's forming sort of a fish. I'll go to the digitize toolbox, select the ellipse and click in the center drag to the outside of the circle, click again and press enter. And I'm gonna change that to a satin fill and I have the eye of the fish. Now I can also insert a design that will be waves underneath the fish. So to do that, I'll go to insert embroidery. This is in decorative accents and it's blue swirls one. I'll click on open and then I'm going to bring this over and set it underneath the fish. I can resize it if I want to. I can rotate it. Move it into place and then let's go to the mirror merge toolbar and mirror merge horizontal to create another wave. Now, these are not exactly centered, but before I center them all, I want to make sure that I group the appropriate objects because otherwise they're all going to collapse into the center when I align centers. So I'm going to go to my color film and select the parts of the fish, and then I can right click and group those. And I will do the same with, okay. The same with the two parts of the wave. Select them in color, film, right click and group. Now when I select everything and go to the arrange toolbar and click on align centers vertically, they will not collapse but will be aligned. Now if you look over in color film, I'm going to be changing my thread colors a bit here. So one of the last things that you'll want to do is go to design and optimize color changes. And it is going to reduce the number of color changes by stitching the light blue first and then the darker blue. Another way we can design with lettering is working with the wreath tool in the mirror merge. So I'll first go to the digitize toolbox, right click on the lettering icon, enter the letter C. And for this, I'm going to use the anniversary alphabet. I'm going to change the size to 1.25 and click OK, and then click on screen to generate the lettering. And by the way, lettering is designed for a certain size range. And if you ever have any questions about that, you can go to the help and the reference manual. And when the reference manual opens, go down to appendices, glossary and index, open that up and then find your 
embroidery fonts. And as I scroll through this, it's going to give me minimums and maximums, both in inches and millimeters. And it is recommended that you stay within the minimums and maximums, or you can have issues when you embroider these fonts. Now, in certain cases, it's okay to go above the minimum, or I mean above the maximum, if you're going to change the type of stitch from a satin stitch to some other type of stitch, then it's okay to go over that maximum. For minimums, you can have problems with certain letters may disappear, or in some cases, underlay can peek out uh, in the, uh, can peek out from the cover stitch. So the minimums and, minimums and maximums are there for a reason. So we have the letter C. Now we're going to go to the mirror merge toolbar and select the wreath tool. And up here under the number, I'm going to choose seven repeats. And as I bring my design around, when I see a design I like, I can click on the screen. If you've overlapped the image, you're going to, or the letter, you're going to get this dialog box. Do you want to merge the overlapped object? Usually you're going to say no because you want to be able to select each of those letters independently. So I'm going to select no, and then I'm going to select all of those. And when I do that, notice that I have a limited number of fills that I can use. So if I wanted to activate one of these other types of fills, I need to go to the edit toolbox and click on break apart. Now when I select everything, I have access to all the different types of fills. And I'm going to change this to a contour fill. And you can see that has parallel or more or less parallel lines of lettering uh, or parallel lines within the letter, I should say. So you'll find that you'll we are going to be using break apart a lot in these lessons because I'll be changing the type of fills of the letters. And you can see that you almost have lost the whole concept of that letter C with that design. Now, another thing that we're going to do is create a lettering border. Say we wanted to do a letter across a kitchen towel, for example. And for this, I'm going to use the layout toolbox. Here, I can have a backdrop that is the size of my towel. So I'm going to select define work area. I'm going to unlock proportional scaling and I'm going to make the width the width of my towel and the height the length of my towel and then go okay. And in the background now I have a towel. I'll go to the digitized toolbox and right click on the letter, type in the letter S this time, and I'm going to use the anniversary alphabet. It's a nice swirly alphabet, so I use that a lot. I'll change the height to a one and click OK, and then click on screen to activate. Now I'm going to zoom in here. I want to rotate this letter. So I'm going to click on the letter to access the rotate handles and rotate it and then place it along the border where I want the uh, embroidered border to be. I'm going to activate my show grid because I want to actually place this letter right on a grid line. So zooming in will really help. Now, when I make this second letter, I'm going to do it with a quick clone. And there is a trick here. You don't want to release that quick clone and then move the letter around. So I've got to keep my mouse down with the, my right click. And I want to drag and drop that letter when it's right on that grid line. Then I'm going to go Control Shift D and I'll keep doing control shift D. And this is done to add. And it looks like I released something. So I'm going to have to undo. 
get back to my original. We'll try this again. I'll right click and drag and then control shift D. I'm having trouble with this exercise. <laughs> Let me start over. Okay, so I'm gonna right click and drag. And once I drop it, now control shift D, control shift D, and I just accidentally hit the touchpad on my keyboard. So once again, third time's the charm. So I'll right click and drag. I'll try not to touch the touchpad now. Control shift D, control shift D. And I'm gonna do that 15, well, I wanna make 15 repeats. So since I can't see how many I've added, I'm gonna add plenty and then I can delete the ones. Okay, so I've got them stretched across. I'll just delete this one. Now you'll notice that in my haste to make it through this exercise, they're not even, they're not along the same line, but I can quickly correct that by going to the arrange menu and align bottom. And then I can move them as, if I want, both vertically as well as horizontally. So this is a tricky thing. I've, I've made about every mistake that I could possibly make in showing you how to do this. Number one, you don't want to release that right click. And number two, don't accidentally hit the touchpad on your uh, computer because it will mess up the control shift D. So when you, once you get that quick clone made, then you do control, then shift, and then D. You don't press them all at once, they're done individually. Now, this is something that used to work in the software. And for those of you who've already done the one free update, you probably can't do this anymore. It was a bug in the in the first update. It has been corrected for the second update. So this is something that you'll be able to do once you get that second update in the fall. All right, we'll go on to the next exercise. And here we're going to create a word with multiple outlines. So I'll go to the digitize toolbox and right click on the lettering and I'll type in the word outlines. I'm gonna just use the London font and I'll do a one inch height and click okay and then click on screen. In the edit toolbox, I'll go to outlines and offsets and I want to uncheck object outlines and check offset outlines. I'm going to change the offset to two millimeters. And if your measuring system is in US, just type in MM after the number and this software will calculate for you. I'll change the offset count to five. I'm going to change the color to match the word and I'm gonna change it to a triple stitch. I want to select common offsets and check include holes and click OK. Now you'll notice that this outline did strange things. I can select that and click on reshape and bring that control point down and, re, um, and correct that. Sometimes it has to do with the spacing of the letters. Sometimes it's the spacing in between the outlines, um, but you can easily correct that. And I'm also going to get rid of these little areas that don't make too much sense to stitch. So you can quickly do multiple outlines around letters. Another thing you might want to do is do a knockdown monogram. So say you're stitching a monogram on terry cloth and you want something to hold that terry cloth down before you stitch the monogram. We'll go to the digitized toolbox and right 
click on lettering. Again, I'm going to use anniversary. And I'm going to change the size of this letter to 1.5 inches. And I'll type in some initials. And click OK, and then click on the screen. Now, if I want to make this middle initial larger, I could break apart the lettering, but I could also edit it another way. And here I'm going to go to reshape and click on the magenta diamond shape to select that letter. If I want to enlarge this letter proportionately, I use the control point that's in the upper right corner and just click and drag on that letter. And you'll notice that the letters automatically respace, and that's an advantage over breaking the lettering apart. Now, if I hold the shift key down and click on the control point in the middle, I can move the lettering below the baseline. And then if I want to kern these letters a little bit closer together, I can do that as well. So I'm going to get my lettering all set up and then I'll press escape and select the lettering. Since I didn't break it apart, when I click on one letter, it selects all the letters. I'll go to the edit toolbox, again outlines and offsets, and here I'm going to keep ob object outlines unchecked. I want offset outlines. I'm going to change the offset to three millimeters, the count to one. I'm going to change the type to a single. And I want a contrast color in this case. And I want individual offsets. I want to keep include holes checked and click OK. Now you can see I've got an outline around my letters. Now, I want to make these interior offsets a contrast color. These were added because we had include holes checked. I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to check or select each one of these tiny offsets. And I'm going to change this to a contrast color. I'm doing this because we're going to use a remove overlap feature, and this way it will make them easy to select. Before I do that, there are some of them that I want to enlarge, and I can do that through reshape. So I can move the control points to make this a little bit larger. And I want to do this one as well. And this one as well. Now, if I want this one to curve, I can right click on that line and that way I can make the line curve. I'll press escape to get rid of the reshape feature. And before I remove overlaps, I want to make sure in options, the remove overlap tab, that I have it set at zero because I want the maximum amount of fill removed from remove overlaps. When you do that, you're gonna need to remember to go back and change it back to the default setting or it will remain at zero. Remember, whenever you change an option, the software is, is going to remember how you changed it. Now we're gonna select both the interior as well as the exterior outlines and change them into a step fill. I want to move the interior ones to stitch after, and I can do that in color film, I want them to stitch after the exterior outlines. And I will select these 
and click on remove overlaps. And then I will delete those and that leaves holes in the lettering. I'll select my letters and move those to the end. And I now have my lettering stitching on top of this fill. Now this fill is pretty dense and I want it just to map down the Terry loops. I don't want it to camouflage the, the loops. I just want them to be matted down. So I'm gonna open up object properties and go to the fill stitch tab and change the density to one millimeter and I'll apply that and go to the stitch angle tab and I'm gonna change it to 15, uh, 15 degrees and apply that. I'll go to the effects tab and uncheck underlay and apply that. And then to get rid of any travel stitches that's going through this, I'll go to the others tab and check travel on edge and click okay. So now we have this loose density fill that's stitching before the lettering to mat down the Terry loops, and then we can stitch the lettering on top. For this next exercise, we're going to learn how to share letters. So let's say you want to create a, a happy holidays tile. We're going to right click on the lettering icon and I'm going to type in, in all caps, happy and then holidays, eliminating the H from the second word. For this, I'm gonna use the Kachikan alphabet and we'll just leave this at the default and I'll click okay and then click on screen. Now, when you do two lines of lettering like this, when I do the first break apart, that is going to separate the two lines of lettering. So I can click on the word happy and move it so that the H is kind of over on the side. In order to move and resize the H, I have to break apart the word, which will now break this into individual letters and I can move the H and then I can hold down the shift key and resize from the corner handle and make my H larger. I'll select everything and change the color of the letters and then let's go ahead and insert an embroidery design here. This is in Celebrations and Seasons. And we want to add just a little bit of holly. And this has a great berry. And when I select this, of course, it's grouped. So I'm gonna to have to right click and ungroup it and grab the berry. And then I'll hold down the control key to get these two leaves and drag them over and put them with the berry. I can drop, uh, drag a bounding box around this and delete this and then move this and rotate it and place it wherever I want to place it. Now with this second word, if I wanted to do a vertical word, all I have to do is double click on this, go to my vertical baseline, and click OK. And then I can move this under the H and I've got another variation of that same design. I had a request for a quilt label with lettering and that's what this next exercise will be. So we're going to, in this case, use the layout toolbox and define quilt block to make the size of the label to give us kind of a starting point for our label. I'm gonna uncheck proportional scaling and I'm gonna use a width of six inches and a height of three inches for my label. And then click okay. And I've got a background that will represent my label. 
I'm going to go to the digitized toolbox and click on rectangle. And I'm going to right click on pattern run. And you've got lots of different patterns here. I'm going to select the Bernina V5. No, I'm sorry, miscellaneous here is what I used. And the feather stitch and click OK and OK again. And then I'll drag a rectangle around my outline of my label. In the digitized toolbox, I'll right click on lettering and then I can type in whatever I want to say. I'm going to do quilted, especially for you. And press enter to go to the next line with love and appreciation. Enter to go to the next line and then August 2019. I'm going to select the center justification and for the alphabet, I'm going to use a small alphabet. Remember, you can go to the reference folder if you need to get information about the size of lettering. I'm going to do Helvetica small and I'm going to make this 0.25 inches. I'll go OK and click on screen. And I'm going to select everything and go to the Arrange Toolbox and Align Centers. I'm not worried about this being off because it, in actuality, that's not going to stitch and my label is finished. That was only used in the background as a guideline for the size of the label I was going to be working with. Now, I have also included an exercise on hanging text that is done in Artwork Canvas. Because of the time, I'm going to skip that and we'll go to the creative lettering uh, handout next. So with this, I will go to the digitized toolbox and right click on the lettering icon and type in the word creative. Here, I'm going to use Mono monoglyceride bold and I'll change the size to 1.25 click OK and click OK, OK uh, click on the screen to generate the lettering once again we're going to break this apart so I can access each letter and do something different to each letter I'll select the letter C and I'm going to click on the upper left corner to increase the size of the letter. Now, when this bold letter is increased in size, I can access the measuring tool by pressing M on the keyboard. And actually, I want to be in metric because that will mean more in this case. You can see it's nine millimeters wide, which is really too wide for a satin stitch. So I can double click on this letter, go to the fill stitch tab and use satin special. Satin special takes intermediate needle penetrations. And you can, if you're going to expand a letter beyond the size that is recommended, you can use this satin special as a fill. When I click OK, that satin special is applied. If I want to do some decorating of letters, I have some designs that are small. In, there are some in the floral and garden. That's the one I grabbed. And this one is called Lace Flower. And I will open that. And then I can bring this over and I can embellish my letter. I can rotate this if I want and move it and place it on the letter. Now, let's say I wanted to do an outline letter. I'll select the letter R and go to Outlines and Offsets. I want to uncheck Offset Outlines and check Object Outlines. Now, remember, Object Outlines place that outline right on the edge of the um, object. 
I'm going to change this to a triple stitch and I want it the same color as my letter and I want individual outlines and go OK. Now, if I want just the outline, I select the fill and press delete. I'm going to put a satin stitch down the, the vertical line of the R. And to do this, I'll go to the digitize toolbox, select the open object tool and the satin outline. And then I'm going to place my clicks just inside that outline. And I'm doing this because of the push pull that is involved when you stitch on fabric. If I hold the control key down, I will draw a straight line. And when I press enter, I now have my, my line and I can move it. And I could actually reshape it and bring this just a little bit closer to the outline. For this next letter, We'll select it and again, we have limited number of fills that we can use. So if I want to put a different type of fill in this, I'm going to have to break it apart. When I break it apart, I'll reselect it and I'm going to right click on pattern fill, click on the select button from the drop down choices. I chose one in Bernina 5. Uh, I'm going to do NP00504. You've got lots of lots of different pattern fills to try. I'll click OK and OK again. Now, because of the way the lettering is digitized, when you use a pattern fill like this, you're probably going to have to do some editing through reshape because I don't want that letter to overlap, the bar of the letter to overlap. So I'm going to bring the control points to the outline of the letter and that's going to look a lot better. Now to kind of make this letter complete, I'm also going to add an outline around it and I actually can just click OK. It's all set up to do exactly what it needs to do. The software will remember the last time you were in outlines and offsets. For this next letter, we're going to make it a low density letter. So I'll come down to the fill and select a step fill. And I want to go into object properties and change the stitch spacing. I'm going to increase the stitch spacing, which will decrease the density. It's an inverse relationship. So 0.9 millimeters, and I'll click on apply. I'll go to the effects tab and I want to remove the underlay and click on apply and then go to the others tab and notice that travel on edge is not an option here. It's grayed out. So I'm going to have to break apart this letter and then select each of the components and apply travel on edge. Now, once again, this bar goes into the letter because of the overlap of satin stitches that would be necessary. But when you have an open fill like this, you can butt up the parts of the letter. And so I'm going to bring those control points now you'll notice that I have this funny little uh, stitching that's going on. I know it's not a travel stitch, but what is happening here is the start and stop points. So what I need to do is bring the start point down here to start at the base of the letter so it will stitch around and I can actually bring the stop point. down here and now I have a smooth letter with no stitching um, that's going through the center of the letter. 
I'll press escape. I'll reselect this and I can add my outlines and offsets by just clicking OK. It's going to add that same outline around the letter. Now let's say we wanted to do a lace fill, basically the same process. I'm going to first break apart the letter, reselect it, click on the lace fill. I'm going to have to reshape this. So I can bring my control points down and then press escape, select everything, add that same outline. With the eye, we're going to add, we'll keep the satin line and we'll just add two outlines to this. So here I'm going to check both object outlines as well as offset outlines. For the offset outline, I want to do minus one millimeter offset. That places it on the inside of the letter. Offset count of one. I'm going to keep this contrast. I want to change this to a contrast, and I also want to make both outlines single and click OK. And that's going to add an outline right on the edge of the letter as well as inside the letter. For this next one, again, we break it apart. If we want to change the type of fill, here I'm going to make it a contour fill. And we won't need to add an outline around this letter. For this last letter, if you want to apply color blend to a letter, you will also find that you need to break it apart. I can select this bar and go to color blending. I'll keep the bottom layer, the dark blue, the top layer, the lighter blue, select whichever profile I want to use. I can change the, ma the maximum spacing. I don't want to get it too big because I there's going to be some travel stitches that I may not want to uh, get rid of. So I want the spacing fairly close together. And when I go OK, you can see that um, there is a travel stitch that I'm going to have to either change or I can go back and if I want to change my color blend, I can undo that. And in, instead of two, I can bring the uh, maximum spacing down a bit, uh, let's say a one. And that's a little bit better. Then I can do the same for this. And here I will want to change the control points. So I can change it with one. And then I also need to change it with the other. Okay, so it looks like it's the light blue that didn't get changed. There we go. Zooming in really helps and also being in design view. And remember to switch to design view, it's the T on the keyboard. Now there are still some travel stitches and I can do one of two things. I can either make the density closer together or I can also change the starts and stops. Now when I change the starts and stops of this and I have to do both layers so That is one layer and the other one
Let me ungroup that. That will make it easier. Okay, now I can get this other. Oops. <laughs> okay, you can see how that took away that run stitch. There will be a jump. So you have to make a decision. Do you want the density closer together? When you try to apply travel on edge to a color blended object, the density fills back in. So you can't, you, you have to either have a jump stitch or change your starts and stop and change the starts and stops, or you will have to um, increase the density. So here we'll right click and ungroup this and I can change the starts and stops then. If I put them at opposite ends and then change the other one to opposite ends, that travel stitch will go away. But you can see that I have jumps. But that way, the travel stitch through the center of the letter doesn't show. So now we have our creative use of fills to add your own style of lettering. And Julie, do I have any questions? Thank you, Debbie. Yes, we do. Um, the first question is about the software update in the fall. Do you know what this update will include? I do because I'm testing it and um, when the release notes come out and you get the software, um, you will know as well. I don't have time to go into what the changes are. A lot of the, the update is going to be to correct bugs in the software. There will be a few changes as well. Okay. Um, the next one is back to the lesson words with multiple outlines. Mm -hmm. It was towards the end of the lesson, um, you checked include holes. What does this do? Okay, when you, when you check include holes, it's gonna put outlines in the center of the letters as well. Okay. Rather than just on the outside of the outline or of the letter. Okay. Um, then back to uh, the quilt label. Um, there were a couple questions about how to remove the jump stitches. Okay. If you want to remove them visually, you just click on the connectors. Remember when lettering is put close together, the jump stitches are so short that they're not going to trim in between the letters unless you go into object properties, tie in and tie offs and activate always trim. And then always trim will trim between the letters even if with small jump stitches. Great. All right, is there a way to take a word and shape it so that just um, the top is an arc, and then the bottom of the letters are on a straight baseline. You bet. Um, let me just type in something here. I'll do nonsense letters and then go to um, edit, elastic lettering, curved, and that will keep your letters, the bottom of the letter straight, and then arc the top of the letter. Okay, great. And you can do, if you want, you can do just one letter too. So if I do that and then go to edit elastic lettering and curved, I can change the shape of, um, of an individual letter that way as well. All right, great. Well, we are out of time. Thank you, Debbie, and thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. Tomorrow you will receive a follow-up email from GoToWebinar with a recording 
Also, in a couple days, the webinar and the handouts will be available on Bernina.com. Click on Learn and Create tab at the top right, then click on Classes and then Webinars. If you have other questions, please email me or Debbie. On behalf of Bernina, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Julie, and thank you, everyone.